Hi. So, unfortunately, I once again feel the need to bring up how shitty we are at strategy on the left. Um, and so, I kind of feel like it would be useful for me to, like, tell you guys about how I saw capitalist realism play out during my university years in London because I think it's like a very clear sort of example of how it affects our generations and like our times pretty much for anyone. Um, and so one thing that I really, that really like stuck in my mind from those years is how people kind of prioritize this idea of like I'm guarding my energy and like that is the priority that is that comes first and then maybe if I get energy <laughs> to do anything else including having a social fucking life then it can come like as like after you know my number one thing which is guarding my energy um, and I think it, it is closely linked to kind of uh, an essentialist approach to politics and I think both of these issues kind of embody the capitalist realism that is um, that dominates us really I think these days and basically um, I suggest for anyone to read Mark Fisher's Capitalist Realism. Um, what he means by that, for those who don't know, is how we basically cannot imagine anything beyond it. Like it's kind of become an assumption that like whatever it is that we want to accomplish or do has to be within that system and that like there's no real hope for change. So we, we're just reduced to, you know, symbolism. And uh, I want to read, like, a quote from it. It basically says, this is a matter not of apathy nor of cynicism, but of reflexive impotence. They know things are bad, but more than that, they know they can't do anything about it. But that knowledge, that reflexivity, is not a passive observation of an already existing state of affairs. It is a self and I mean, it pretty much is. Like, I want to let you guys know how I was kind of received in this sort of environment. When I got there, I was 19. I came from um, a Spanish island, which is actually um, kind of in Africa. Um, Spain, for those of you who don't know, had a dictatorship um, up until about 40 years ago but basically we never really left it behind uh, our process was incredibly flawed and so i grew up in this rather kind of violent um profoundly like conservative environment um and so i got to london and basically i'm in this degree which is you know comparative literature with film studies basically there's like the priority, there were many good things about it. My kind of problem is that um, class isn't really centered as much as I would love to see it centered right now. But basically it's based on um, multiple things, including class, but uh, kind of the main thing that we put the focus on, maybe not just the university, but like also the kind of friends that I had, the students, was a post-colonial studies and kind of a post-colonial approach to pretty much any text and any politics um, and any relationship, to be honest. But like, so I get there and, you know, I feel like in the group, for example, it's uh, some of us that are like, that have less money <laughs> and coincidentally um it obviously doesn't represent the majority but like it was white women from maybe me from spain and then other people from the uk and then other women who were maybe you know from 
I don't know, Latin America or who were queer, they actually were the ones who had um, a more comfortable kind of class position, like they, they had more wealth. Um, and basically, we, like in our conversations, wealth was barely ever centered. Like the things that were centered were, were queerness, race, etc. And for example, something that really annoys me to this day is that if you didn't look like something, then it was ignored. Like I come from a colonized archipelago in fucking Africa, and yet I don't look like it, I guess, to British people. And so that was literally, they didn't even know, like they wouldn't even ask me. Um, and so as much as I, like we do need to, you know, talk about all those issues, basically class was kind of like the last thing. And it was kind of ironic because these British people who were the ones that I think were kind of pushing this were actually the ones that had a, a, a harshest uh, situation in terms of uh, material conditions, you know, their economics. And so I got thinking about this, like I've been thinking about it for a while, but the other day, like on Jacobin, I was kind of re-watching um, this talk with Vivek Chiver, and it, it was basically the title is The Legacy of Orientalism in Edward Said. Um, and Vivek basically said, you want to see a post-colonialist who has nothing but contempt for working people, you read Homi Baba's essay on the minor strike. And, you know, that, like, Homi Baba was literally one of our readings. I remember struggling with those readings precisely because of how they were written. And that contempt you know, even if they were from a similar class background as me or like somewhat similar, even like lower at some points, I think, like some people, I still felt such a like contempt for me for not being from an already kind of progressive slash woke um, context for not coming from there, which I mean, that's where I was born, there's pretty much nothing I can do about that. Um, but basically I remember, like, I was, like, I remember, like, I was literally, like, 19, 20, 21, like, this was my fucking age. And I remember making comments like, oh my god, I love the Enlightenment. And one of these British people being like, what did you just say? Like, I hate the Enlightenment. And I remember being like, wow, oh my god, what have I said? Like, what have I said? Like, I, I sh sh shut up. Like, I, I'm not going to say it again. There's probably something wrong with the Enlightenment, you know. Um, then I remember, like, another anecdote that I was like, I wanted to say something, and I, did, I didn't know how to say it without being, like, eaten alive. They, like, one of them had broken up with this guy, and, like, time went on. And a year later, they were like, oh, my God, it's been a year. Like, we got to organize this that you know you've been without this dude for like a year and I was like you want to do a breakup party a year later like that sounds odd <laughs> like I just I was like I guess it's some feminist thing like I, I didn't really get it but I knew that I couldn't even comment on it because they would have probably like labeled me like the biggest like sexist ever um and another one was like I remember like I stupidly kind of said once like oh my god this uh, girl that like this guy that I like is with she's like so much uglier than me which a very dumb comment but like their reaction like it literally ruined the entire night like the entire night was ruined by this comment because they they ganged up on me like I had killed someone like it was, it was tragic. Like they, they were literally like, "How can you say that? Like, can you imagine if you said that about us? Like, with all the bullshit that women women are get thrown at, uh, twenty four seven, and you wanna add on top of that, like that type of comment, like not a good look." And I was like, "Okay, and like, 
it was obviously it was a very stupid superficial comment but you know um the the other thing that you know this is like with definitely with more than one person like for example i once made a comment like the healthcare system in the uk is so fucked up and like get lit it and they were like oh my god like how dare you how, like literally how dare you say that and i i was like and i remember this person was like i didn't even finish listening to your message and i was like well if you had maybe you would have heard that i don't want to take away public health care i'm actually complaining about how underfunded it is and how expect like how lucrative private healthcare is and you know it just felt like she was waiting for me to say something because she was determined to understand me in a way that fit her idea of me rather than my actual beliefs uh, and you know how the, how my beliefs even change across time like she and, and i think that is just fundamentally disrespectful to treat someone as they were before because that, that's not who they are now right uh so do you ever want to see them change or do you just want to never treat them now ever and, and basically trying to finish this conversation and like healthcare this person was literally like weeks later like over a month later like yeah i'm still guarding my energy i can't talk about this I was like, okay, you're guarding your energy, so we are never ever gonna have this conversation that you are determined to um, understand in a specific manner that you've already, you know, made a decision on prior. And with other people, you know what I was saying, like, this is not one person, this is a bunch of people who basically, who I think represent, like, uh, you know, potentially even a majority. Um, who basically are like, I can't discuss politics because that is bad for my mental health. And like, I need to guard my energy. So I can't have this conversation with you right now. And so conversations are never perfect. And like the type of conversations we would have were like, for example, a like insistence on me, like, uh, dyeing my hair pink so like literally this comment constantly like oh my god your hair pink would look so amazing but obviously you wouldn't do anything to your hair would you because like you like western standards of beauty and i was like i don't know i mean i, I don't even have the money to do something to my hair to be honest but like whatever um and then you know when like something that i was getting on another video like when I was desperately fucking looking for housing in London, uh, pathetically expensive, they were like, just get it together. Just get your shit together. What's wrong with you? Like, why are you crying all the time? Like, get it together. And it's like, that was literally like the opportunity to say to, say to someone who ignorant hey you know why this is so awful you know you live in capitalism like have you heard about that because that might be the root of your problem and that was never that was never said like it was literally like you are the problem you get it together you look for a house and you like conform like what do you want a fucking palace it was like yeah no i, I just don't want to live with a rat you know um so this was the vibe of course you know these people like i want to say like some of them are great i wish the best for all of them and like this is the problematic part but like they have like we agree on a whole lot of stuff however like it, what was the activity really apart from like policing other people i mean we weren't like none of us in class but, like from my friends or like from my other class or whatever like none of these young people were either like unionized or really like even i don't know going to protest 
or consuming like independent media or like supporting that like we weren't really doing anything so if your activity is gonna be to virtue signal like it's not even convert someone like if you want to convince someone do you really act this way or are you just as i said determined to misunderstand them and you know kind of draw like uh, highlight the difference between you and them and like how much better you are and like how you know not woke they are or something um and so i think this definitely is an embodiment of what fisher kind of was getting at and i think basically the kind of a process behind it is well we can't get corbin elected we can't get bernie sanders elected but hey we can maybe like change an unnecessary thing in our like little organization or maybe we can like go like gang up on whatever like whoever we perceive to be like problematic um and you know we, we can't have stable housing but hey here's a scented candle right like i can i can guard my energy to a scented candle and like not organize not actually research or look at the problems or have conversations on them that might be difficult and that might have disagreement um or that might be with ignorant fucking people like i used to be uh, who are ignorant, but maybe if they came in contact with reality, they would change their mind, which, by the way, is literally what happened to me, and I've seen it happen to other people, and, you know, uh, people are born in very shitty circumstances, and why should that be, like, a deal breaker to try to convince them, um, or just let them know that, you know, uh, an alternative and that they even live under capitalism so people like some people barely know um and so yeah basically what i'm getting at is that we like seek escapism instead of tackling the problem um we live in like this perpetual kind of defeatist attitude instead of actually a uh, take, like taking action that will allow us to be hopeful, to be hope, like literally um, embody hope as an action. Um, and so I want to kind of recommend um, a couple of uh, authors and like pieces that basically get uh, do a quick systemic uh, critique of these tendencies on the left that like are very, very influenced by liberalism um, and i want to add as well like i see like this parallelism between kind of liberal leftists if you can say that like basically people who might be like social democrats but have like a lot of liberal neoliberal influence uh, and so like profoundly like identity politics also very like post-colonial centered it, which again don't misunderstand me like post-colonial theory has very good points but there's also problems with it like it's not everything is black or white um but then there's also this marxist leninist kind of sector of the left that i find not again hashtag not all marxist leninist don't freak out um but i feel like some part of the Marxist Leninist sector is very like committed to an essentialist approach, which basically means to give inherent characteristics to a given group of people, to you know treat uh, tools of capitalism such as racism as if race is actually real, and so people in the global north are like inherently counter revolutionary and like you know inherently wars like they basically take this whole um very bad idea of the west and like essentialize it and like flip it and then keep applying it and i 
don't think that's productive. So yeah, I, I just wanna you know make it clear that I think it's it's not just one sector of the left that has these issues. I think it's pretty much anybody who adopts an essentialist um, approach or an approach with with essentialist tendencies um, in place. And so one person who I recommend for this type of is Ben Burgess. Um, basically, on Jacobin, he like there's this article. It's we can transform ourselves into a better world, and, and I'm just gonna read a couple of quotes from it. Um, Taking extreme positions that alienate most people outside of our political bubble often feel like a way uh, of taking an even clearer and sharper stand against those injustices. One problem with reducing left um, politics to moral symbolism is that if the point of your politics is to perform your inner commitments rather than to mobilize the broadest possible coalition to bring about uh, your political goals, it's easy to end up acting like the guardian of an exclusive leftist clubhouse instead of eagerly welcoming every possible conflict. Right? Uh, the other point, we can win over a majority and take power because we're undermining ourselves because of factors that we can only do anything about once we win a majority and take power. So, you know, I feel like the examples I've made before basically focusing on this incredibly like superficial um, points and like, you know, very also, you know, the thing with the hair, for example, like really focus on like optics and like aesthetics um, and, and, you know, and also kind of putting, for example, this like supposed solidarity between women when they don't even know which woman I'm talking about, like, you know, it's just this like um, prioritizing certain things without even understanding the context. Um, and yeah, and basically alienating people, you know, as my friend did, with like, yeah, I'm not even gonna finish listening to that message. Um, or like they did when they, like, they wouldn't even ask me like about where I was from because I didn't fit the image, the optics of what they would consider um, a woman of color um, at the time. And yeah, basically we can only do anything about this. It's just like, uh, we absolutely must do something about sexism. Like, um, of course, but if we don't have a majority, we aren't gonna be able to do it. Or we aren't gonna be able to do it as profoundly as we should so you know kind of prioritize uh bringing in a majority um which you know uh fisher was kind of getting at as well with how people are like more focused on these like symbols rather than like like people don't want to make converts like that's not the point uh, for them, and it's like, how can that not be the point? <laughs> like, it's wild that that is not the point. Like, we need a majority, or otherwise, we're we're not we're not going to do anything. Like, it's, we've already lost if we don't have a fucking majority. Um, then like a, a huge movement that I feel like is quite close to this, um, you know, type of approach that I've been describing. Um, is this like influencer activism um, and I recommend reading the, um, and watching uh, actually this video of the influencer industrial, industrial complex with Ash Sarkar and uh, Moya Lothian Madrin on Novara uh, Media. They are amazing. Um, this conversation, I, I thought it was great. Uh, basically they talk about you know how these influencers, um, for example, Florence Lim, who, by the way, I've seen the people that I was talking about before on Twitter now, 
uh, what a coincidence. Uh, basically, they again like it's a focus on like aesthetics and like self care and like they use feminism not as a means to highlight how capitalism oppresses women and uses sexism uh, to serve capital, but as a way to tell women, remember you are your number one priority. It's about you, and you just you just relax, girl. You just relax. You go get them. Uh, whenever you're ready, but, but just relax, you know, just like buy the candle, buy my book, and chill, you know, and like just remember you're better, you're worth it, you're valid, everything is valid, if anything is not valid, they're sexist, you know, that's what they're telling you that. Um, so, yeah, like, this mentality, not right. Um, and, yeah, so, what's that? There's also an article. It is something that I have fallen into to an extent, right? Like, I feel like after years of being told that I was this, like, horrible person who liked the environment, oh my god, what a crime. Uh, probably liked it because my dad liked it, by the way. Like, you know, that there was no need <laughs> to gang up for that. But, um, yeah, so... I, I, you know, after that, I, I did kind of also make my own mistakes because we all do. Like, that's the thing. We all go through a process and we live in this context. And when I critique someone or something, um, as I was, like I said before, that doesn't mean that I'm like fully uh, disqualifying them or it or that I'm saying this is horrible don't ever consider it absolutely not like if i agree or disagree with someone or something that uh, you know i don't do that as a whole i do that with a, a given specific thing uh, especially since we're talking about the left by the way like and that's what i'm referring to um it, it doesn't mean that you know i hate this person or like i hate this entire theory not at all like i probably can find very valid um, beliefs in that person very valid points in that theory it just means that like i also see problems and i think if we don't make a habit of of um being nuanced and you know being able to coalesce despite our differences then are we just seeking to build a cultish thing that works for a minority? Are we just seeking to build a subculture that doesn't appeal to the majority, but actually just serves as an opportunity for us to show how ideologically pure we are? You know, um, yeah, nuance. Nuance is good, guys. Um, <laughs> Um, and and yeah, and I just wanted to clarify, like I'm not I'm not here to like say someone or something is completely awful, not at all, far from that. Um, I'm just I just hope we can critique each other and still coalesce um, and you know be grown adults. Um, mm. And someone who was amazing at this um, and who I and many myths it was Michael Gross and so someone else that I love and I think it's an example of how we should act like the approach we should take on the left is Cornel West and so Michael Brooks on his show said this about Cornel West um, the irony of this ability to self-access and not exclude anybody in a fundamentalist fanatical way actually incentivizes the types of self-inquiry and capacity to actually truly transform institutions, individuals, economic behaviors, and culture. Right? Because, like, we need to appeal to a majority. Like, if we base our whole thing on, I don't know, misogynoir, or we go around, which I know hard to believe, but I think some people... Uh, we go around tweeting Stalin's 
did nothing wrong, and they still look at it very cool. Like, guys, what the fuck? Like, that, that's not... First of all, a lot of this stuff is not cool. <laughs> um, mm. A lot of other stuff, like, misogyny art is definitely, like, a thing. Um, if you tell me Kamala is a good leader, then I don't think that's reality. But, like, basically... You know, when we focus on certain things and, like, we just go around with that as, like, our flag and, like, our brand or whatever, um, most people, you know, like, by the way, I hate to break it to you, most people are ignorant, and I don't mean that in a bad way, like, I think ignorance will ruin my life, but, like, most people aren't going to be interested in that, they're actually going to be turned off. Understandably, sometimes, by the way. Um... <laughs> have a home, eat, um, have life where they have, where they can choose, you know, um, mm. who they want to be, what they want to do for most of the day. Um, mm. It's, you know, it's bread and butter things, it's daily things that people want, and I think when we focus on these like either extremely theoretical um mm. or extremely like you know unpopular sometimes for good reason takes um mm. we are we're not gonna mm, have more people join us we're just not and if we don't then we've already lost and you know going back to capitalist realism like like part of the reason why so many uh, people who are left leaning or like on the left kind of don't even try is because we have internalized this idea that capitalism is the only alternative. There, there is no other. There, there is no alternative at all. Capitalism is like not only the only alternative, but like the only possible reality. And like that's absolutely not true. But if we allow ourselves to um you know maintain our internalization of this uh, patriarchist idea you know that like there is no alternative and like this is it and we can just survive and like um see who's you know the most ideologically pure of, of course we're not gonna try to convince people why would we right like we've already lost there's no alternative so why why try like let, let's just show how how knowledgeable I am in comparison to, you know, these ignorant people who, by the way, might be working class. Like, that not, that, that's the other point. Like, class is completely, like, forgotten about why it should literally be, of course, by, again, like, don't, don't, please don't, like, be committed to misunderstanding me. Like, um, sexism and racism and a lot of other uh, branches of oppression must be addressed, but, like, class, Capital is the reason why we are where we are in this dystopian reality. So forgetting about that doesn't seem like a great idea. And all of this stuff is connected. Um, mm. Check out my suggestions. <laughs> they are great. Um, I'm going to leave more in, in the caption. And yeah, just I, guys, I'm a queer and I, my heart breaks with some people and how ignorant they are and how they just step all over my humanity. So I get it. Like, I know it just systemically. I know how systemically we are, that, you know, there's an even more profound oppression depending on um, just how you're born, like, basically. But I also feel it, like, like myself. Like, I know it can be hard have a nuanced conversation with someone who you feel is insulting you but for the very sake of gathering that majority that will allow us to actually implement the change that will cease this torture we need to have conversations and like you know realize that self-caring isn't gonna do it like you being there with your It's actually in the, in the interest of capital that you stay home instead of seeing your friends and make
really talk about how shitty housing is under capitalism. Um, mm. I think there is an in the interest for you to stay home to with your scanty candle and pay smoothie. So need to think about that. Um, if you want like actual data, by the way, Jacobin has done this amazing study. It's like a, a, like an experimental study on working class political views. Um, they designed like a survey in collaboration with um, the public opinion firm you boss. So, I mean, check it out. Like, Jacobin does great work. Uh, all of these people in media that I mentioned do great work that provide data. As I said, if you want to look at the numbers, which um, you should. Um, mm. 